All right. No longer straight, fun, curved lines. Ew. This one's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to be okay. We actually have three sections here. The way you want to think about breaking them up is notice from negative infinity. I guess I'm writing too fast. To x equals 0, the graph is decreasing. From x equals 0 to x equals 3, the graph is increasing. And then from 3 on, it's decreasing, but it's not going to go down to negative infinity. It looks to be flattening out. So from this example and the previous one, we're covering all, basically all the exam, all the things you could possibly uh, bump into. So let's pick a point between negative infinity and zero. It does not matter which one we pick. We're actually going to pick several for this example. So if I pick this point, it looks to be pretty close to negative three there. And if I drew a tangent line, how would you describe the slope of that tangent line? Negative. It'd be a negative slope because the tangent line is decreasing. So this would be apparently negative n backwards check is what that says. Oh, now there's a circle. No, no. Why are you being bad today? Well, that's not going to get annoying. It's negative. Very good. But let's take this point here and draw a tangent line. How would you describe that one? Negative. That one? Negative. That one? Hmm? Also negative. Well, there's different values of negative, though. Notice this one is a lot steeper than this one. So this value over here is much more negative than this one. Because pretty soon, if I picked right at zero, what type of tangent line is this? Or so if you know, I'll write it here. So on the x. If we looked at a number line, this slope would be somewhere over here, whereas this one would be closer to zero, yes. So notice we're going from negatives to zero, okay? And that's where our first piece over there is. Now, there's many ways to draw a graph that's going uh, from a negative value to a positive value. So our shape isn't going to be correct in this chapter. In chapter 11, uh, chapter 14, we'll know what shape to use. What I mean by that is, for our derivative from negative infinity to zero, we're going to have something that starts off negative and gets closer to zero. So one more time, at negative three, it was a really negative value. And negative 2, it was not as negative. Negative 1, not as negative. But when we got closer and closer to 0, it got closer and closer to y equals 0. Or the derivative equals 0, I should say. As far as the shape is concerned, notice I used a straight line here. However, we could have had... And I'll just erase this later. We could have had it curve up. <laughs> uh, 
You're making a fool out of me. Do you hate me? We'll talk about it when we get home. It could curve up. So notice it's going from negative to more positive. It could curve up like this. It could have also curved up like that. So any of these three shapes, notice from left to right, we're going from negative to zero. In other words, it's increasing. So all three of these shapes are increasing. I don't care which one you use. The straight lines are the easiest, obviously. But they don't have to be straight lines. They could have a little curve to them. As it'll turn out, we'll learn in chapter 14 which of these three shapes it is. So let me say this all one more time. As we picked negative and negative x values, our slope was really steep. However, as we picked x values closer and closer to zero, the slope of the line started to flatten out, which means the derivative, which is the slope of the line, is getting closer to zero. So we went from highly negative numbers closer to zero. So let's do that again. So starting again at zero, notice there our tangent line is horizontal, which means the slope is zero. So we're again beginning from this point here. At x equals zero, the slope of the tangent line was zero. So that's the point zero, zero. And as I pick numbers closer and closer to three, tell me about the slopes of these tangent lines. They're positive. Well, notice the closer I get, the steeper the line gets until we eventually hit a sharp point. What is that sharp point going to do to the graph of the derivative? Not a whole. It's going to make a vertical asymptote. The reason being is the closer and closer we get to the sharp point, the steeper the tangent line gets. The steeper the tangent line, that means your slope is a much bigger number. So your slope as a number gets bigger and bigger <laughs> till infinity because we can get as close to that sharp point as we want. So since it's getting as big as it wants to get, that creates a vertical asymptote. So that's, where the, well, that's what happens to a sharp point. It's going to create a vertical asymptote. So sad. For this graph, at least. Um, for a vertical asymptote graph, it does something else. But again, since we can get as close as we want and this line gets steeper and steeper without bound, we got ourselves a vertical asymptote. As far as what the picture looks like, since the p slopes are all positive, except for at x equals zero, that means at the graph of the derivative, we have to stay above the x-axis. Because if we went below the x-axis, that would say negative. And also, we have a vertical asymptote at three. So we're going to have a dotted line at x equals three. Oh my gosh. Three. Is it about that thing I said? That's okay. So the graph is probably just going to curve up and get closer to infinity forever. And I just realized I'm going to put the x equals 3 on the other side. Please do the same. <laughs> yep, this is innovative, guys. Really innovative. All right, our last little bit. is from 3 to infinity. So notice the line is decreasing, which means as we draw tangent lines, what type of values are we getting? Negative. However, 
the line is also starting to flatten out. So what type of tangent lines will this eventually be, uh, turn into? Horizontal, which means their slope is zero. So from here, again, we're coming from that vertical asymptote again for the same reason it was created before, but it's, the slopes are really negative, and then it gets closer to zero. Really negative, and then it gets closer to zero from three to infinity. If you have a pencil and you feel comfortable, try to sketch what you think that last part is. Starts off negative and then gets really closer to zero. You can put a little curve to it if you want. So from three to infinity, the derivative starts off negative and then gets closer to zero. Is everyone ready for the exciting reveal? <laughs> oh, who was excited by that one? How disappointing. Uh, it's like we're watching a Cleveland sports game. Okay, there we go. We can do this again. I mean, I'll just go slower. There we go. That looks good there. So it starts off negative meaning it's below the x-axis, and then it gets closer to zero, meaning it goes towards the x-axis. It won't cross it, because if it crossed it, that means it became positive, which would mean this graph, the original graph, starts to tilt back up. But one thing we want to conclude now, because it's going to help us later on, is notice when the graph was decreasing, the derivative is negative, when the graph was increasing, the derivative was positive. So we're going to see that a whole bunch of times in this class. When the fu original function was decreasing, the graph, the derivative was negative. When the original function was increasing, the derivative was positive. And the third conclusion is notice when you had a horizontal tangent line, the derivative was zero. As it turns out, finding horizontal tangent lines is going to be a big thing in this class.